Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan and I'm the business administrator here at FaithBridge. I'm joined by Pastor Ken who just gave us part two of our Surrender series. The sermon was titled Slaving Away and was teaching us how do we surrender in the workplace. Thanks for joining us, Ken. Sure. Uh, we've got a handful of questions here that came in. Uh, the first one is, is really related to that history lesson you gave us at the beginning of the sermon. Mm -hmm. And they're asking, what does it mean for slavery to be economically driven and how is that different than the economics driving African slave trade? So kind of what is the difference between first century slavery and then you know 18th, 19th century slavery right. that we saw here? Right, well, if you study the history of, of Rome, what you'll find is that uh, slavery was uh, rampant, half the Roman Empire. I think it was 60 or 80 million people, or I mean, lots of people were slaves. That wasn't unique to Roman history. Most every culture uh, has utilized slavery. Hmm. Now, the interesting thing about slavery in, in that era is that it had nothing to do with the color of a person's skin. Hmm. Um, it didn't even have to do with a person's education. Uh, so you had slaves who might be uh, that version, 2,000 years ago version of doctors, hmm. um, and but they were owned by somebody else. It was uh, economically driven in that this is just the way our, our system is built, hmm. um, which makes no sense to capitalists and, and those of us and doctors. What are you talking about? And of course, in the 19th century, uh, uh, the, that version uh, or iteration of slavery was racially driven, the color of our skin driven. And I might add, today there is slavery that's going on uh, that is all about, you know, human trafficking mm. and sex trafficking and this sort of thing. And so slavery is always repulsive, always has been, always will be, any iteration it takes. Um, but that's what I was, I was trying to just briefly, probably shouldn't have even mentioned it because it does beg the question, well, what did that exactly mean? Well, I was basically saying it wasn't the same thing as uh, black, white, color of your skin, mm -hmm. slavery of the 19th century but it was still repulsive, mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, well thanks for the added context sure. there. Uh, the second question that came in was, how does submission work when you question the ethics of your employer? Uh, basically, they're not asking me to do something illegal, but it doesn't necessarily sit quite right with me ethically, mm -hmm. maybe right there on that boundary. Mm -hmm. How do I handle that situation? Mm -hmm. Right, well, remember what we talked about last week, the, the governing principle is that there's, there's always two authorities in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, in the situation of last week, the government, in the situation of this week, our boss, our employer, and then God. And we always yield to the human authority unless that human authority tries to usurp the authority of God and mandates the violation of God's word. But there are plenty of times when th that isn't exactly done, it, it, it might move into what some would call a gray area. It's not technically against the law, it, uh, b but it is, something is wrong about it in my soul. Mm -hmm. Well, I would point uh, the questioner and all of us to look back at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the book of Daniel. So they had any number of situations that were thrust upon them by uh, the Nebuchadnezzar regime. Mm -hmm. um, before they had to eat the food. You remember, that's, that's the one thing they said, that this is not kosher, and God's word says clearly we cannot eat this. Mm -hmm. But they enrolled in the school that the, all of the captives uh, from Israel went through all sorts of, you know, what we'd call college, I guess, and they were, they were educated and they learned even the, 
theology of, you know, which was a, a dark theology. It wasn't Judeo-Christian theology, but they sat there and they learned. And, um, and so uh, I, I think maybe there's two or three things th that are w worth mentioning to mm -hmm. this questioner. Well, if something feels a little bit off, it's, it's not like call the FBI off, but maybe the first thing is, is there a, a respectful way that we could say, I, I don't know that I'm feeling quite comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, is there a, a, a more creative solution? Um, even in the instance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, remember they, they came up with a solution. They said, no, no, we can't eat this food because that would be a violation of God's word. But we got a solution for you. How about you just run a test and we'll be the, the guinea pigs and you just feed us uh, the vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, just measure and see, are we any healthier or, or worse? 10 days from, when it 10 days from now? Well, that was a creative solution. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, that can be a helpful uh, concept. And then at the end of the day, I think we have to either be willing to accept the consequences. Mm -hmm. And in the instance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, but you know, now, we can't bow down and worship the, uh, this idol. Mm -hmm. that, that goes, that, that is, we cannot do that. Right. So you're gonna get thrown into the fiery den. Well, then so we'll just let God do with us what he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. Either he'll save us or he won't, but either way, we can't do that. Yeah. And so I think uh, maybe that can uh, be helpful to the questioner mm -hmm. um, who's, finding themselves in a little bit of that, that it's, it's, it's not quite there yet illegal, but I'm feeling a little uncomfortable with it. Maybe some of those thoughts can be helpful. You know, another thing is really, this is where community is helpful. Absolutely. I know we talked about yeah, right. the meet and greet the today. The grow groups and, and be in, get yourself into a grow group. There's nothing better than having some brothers, sisters in Christ who love the Lord and love the word and process that with them right. and say, I'm in this situation and I'm being asked to do this and, and let some other pe people speak truth. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Help you examine the scriptures and see. Absolutely. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay, this is kind of getting in the next two questions on how to handle a particular boss. Uh, and, and the first one is actually a boss who's a really nice person. Okay. Uh, however, uh, he's a Mormon and he seems to be actively sharing his faith with this individual and they're wondering, I'm the employee how do I handle this? Am I allowed uh, to share my faith yeah. back, but I need to submit uh, and right. listen? And yeah. how does this work? Well, I, obviously I don't know that circumstance. Far be it for me to tell you. Here's the answer. Mm -hmm. But here are some thoughts that perhaps can guide the questioner to an answer. Um, Jesus said uh, very clearly in several different places, uh, and we even saw that in, in Dr. Rosevere's testimony. Uh, you're gonna take up your cross. You have to take up your cross. You're gonna follow me. You may w very well suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Son of God has no place to l lay his head. And uh, you know, it's, you're following in my footsteps. This is gonna be rough. Mm -hmm. um, he says, the, you know, he who acknowledge, and she who acknowledges me before men, I'll acknowledge before the Father someday in heaven. And if you won't acknowledge me, then, then uh, I, I won't acknowledge Some strong things. So mm -hmm. I would caution the questioner about just pulling your punch all together mm -hmm. and just only listening. I think it's a great place to start mm -hmm. with any type of uh, faith sharing, evangelism, uh, type of effort, we always do well to start by listening to where are you coming from? Uh, it sounds like this person is, uh, the boss is coming from a very clear point of view that he's trying to proselytize and uh, he wants a breakthrough moment with the questioner. Mm -hmm. Well, so after listening, it sounds like uh, he, I think it was a he, has sufficient uh, training that he could probably handle a, a good question or two. Maybe you craft, maybe you do a little studying on your own mm -hmm. and craft a question that you put back. You know, but what about this? And what about that? And, and let him wrestle some. And I think your tone 
it says everything. If you're mm -hmm. if we're respectful and you're warm and you're engaging and it's and it's winsome and it's he said it's a very nice boss and mm -hmm. friendly and it doesn't sound like a very hostile situation, but even one that might be begging for a little bit more than that than the questioners choosing to hit the ball back over the net. Well, right. I would say go ahead and try hitting the ball back a little bit. Yeah. And uh, but usually leading with questions is a non-attacking way to do that. Mm -hmm. A well-crafted question can really open a lot of dialogue mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, put your hands on your hips, standing up and say, now let me tell you how it is. Yeah, well, that's not usually a winsome witness. Right. Um, so I think that's helpful. Yeah, I hope so. uh, the next situation is the opposite. It's I actually have a very rude boss, someone who's harsh, uh, very tired. You don't have a Oh, I don't. You're right. <laughs> this is my boss, and he's great. <laughs> Reading from the question here. Uh, that person has a very harsh boss. This one does, oh, I gotcha. yes. All right. uh, who feels like they're rude and task-driven and needs help really daily dealing with this. Now, the caveat in here is they claim to know the Lord, uh, but what should I do? Should I just pray harder for this person? Do you confront the person? Any thoughts? How do you handle uh, somebody who is a believer but is also rude and, and difficult to deal with? Yeah, that's difficult. Um, well, yes, pray harder. And, uh, but here again, I'd probably point the questioner back to community. Mm -hmm. Who are you, who is helping you carry this burden? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're trying to do it by yourself, none of us can do that. He, that's why he gave us the, the, the body of Christ, which mm -hmm. we'll talk m more about uh, next week, actually. The, the believers coming together and how do we interact with each other? Small group, grow group. You know, I hope you're processing that with these people who know your circumstance better than I can just from us looking at this sentence or two, mm -hmm. um, who, can, who know you, who can speak into your circumstance in, and you know, help you to decide, here's mm -hmm. maybe a, a step that you could take in this rough situation that you find yourself. Mm -hmm. And a, that is a difficult situation sure. for sure. Uh, and a lot of people are in it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. Uh, this one is, I'm a stay-at-home spouse, uh, and my spouse is in a pretty difficult work environment. They, uh, you know, have a tough situation, heavy workload. Mm -hmm. How do I encourage or help? I don't really understand quite what they're going mm -hmm. through, but how do I help them when they come home and they're stressed You're and right. have worked a long day? Sure. Well, which is a good question and a practical question. Uh, and so good for you thinking to ask the question. I think it can be helpful for all of us who are married and who have spouses. Perhaps the, the, the best counsel I can think of off the top of my head doesn't really have to do with what we talked about today, but has to do with a different topic, um, th th which incidentally we're gonna get to in this series. How do I uh, serve my husband? How do I serve my wife? Mm. And we'll get to that in parts four and five. Uh, so we're gonna deal with the marriage relationship because Peter deals with the marriage relationship. Um, but uh, I think of the book the, uh, on the five languages of love or the mm. five love languages, mm -hmm. yeah. And which has been a bestseller for a couple of decades. And it's not necessarily a, a biblical, here's the verse in the, you know, the, the text at each chapter, mm -hmm. but it is a very practical, I believe insightful uh, conversation starter to, to help identify, well, if theoretically or realistically, your spouse has favors one or maybe two of the five love languages, uh, you know, meaningful touch or, or uh, acts of servanthood or on. The best way that you can communicate with that person is using that language. Now the challenge in, in most marriages is that it's rare that two people that are married have the very same love language. So we tend to want to be communicated to by our spouse in our preferred love language, and we 
so that means we want them to learn our language and then we want them to learn our language because we want to talk back to them or serve them or, or mm -hmm. whatever it is in our love language, which usually isn't ours. Mm -hmm. And so we have to grow in, in that arena. Um, but I might point the question or two to a simple little fun read along those lines in, in a good conversation on a date night or, or two with a mm -hmm. spouse to just figure out how could I do a better job of ministering to you? Because I can tell you're under a great deal of stress. The situation's hard. I appreciate all that you're doing, um, the sacrifices that you're making. I want to be a, a, a helpful spouse, not a, not a harmful, uh, you know, kind of spouse. And, mm -hmm. um so, I mean, practically, I can just illustrate from our own life, uh, Suzanne and, and my life, uh, my love language is, is, is what he calls in that book the, uh, the language of, of, of practical acts of service, uh, I think it is. A in other words, when Suzanne you know, prepares a dinner or brings home uh, things that I needed picked up because I didn't have time to, you know, and mm -hmm. just little favors like that. It just, just means the world. I'm like, oh, you love me. I love you. And it's, mm -hmm. well, um, you know, so especially if, if I'm in a stressful time or in a preaching season where I'm needing more time and mm -hmm. just to have her come in and say, I, I, I'm going to do this and this and this, which I know was on your list. It means the world. Sure. That's a huge help. All right, last question we have here is, uh, how does this message apply for those who no longer work for pay? Uh, maybe I'm a volunteer uh, with my children's school or PTO or some sort of extracurricular activity in the community. Does this a sermon apply to me or I get the pass or what's the deal with that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think, no, no, there's, you don't get a pass. Um, <laughs> I think it's quite safe to say that Peter was writing to people who, by and large, poor Christians, many of whom were slaves, uh, the, the, he was saying, no, you're not doing this uh, for money. You're doing this because you love God. Mm. And it's out of reverence for him. This is why you're going to be uh, a faithful uh, servant. Mm -hmm. And I think that then translates perfectly to any type of volunteerism. Sure. Uh, I think it translates in being faithful. If you say, I'm going to show up for, for this, you know, uh, block of time that you actually do it and that you don't say, well, something else came up and, and it's more important. Well, that's hard on an organization right. uh, if, if, they, if they're volunteer driven and they need people. And, uh, so I think the message applies perfectly um, that we say, I'm, I'm going to submit. Uh, I'm voluntarily submitting myself the way Jesus did mm -hmm. uh, to this system. I, it's not because I'm getting paid, uh, but it's because I, I want to help the, the organization, the school, the, you know, whatever program, mm -hmm. um, the ministry. I want to help this to do better. And so I'm going to come in, learn. Uh, the the game rules, the playbook, the what's in bounds and out of bounds, and I, I'm gonna, I'm going to serve faithfully and wholeheartedly, um, you know. In that, I might also add the the I thought where the question was going a moment ago, but I'm going to go ahead and just raise it and then answer it. Um, th thought you might be getting ready to say, what if I'm the boss? Um, how does this passage? apply to me mm -hmm. if I'm the boss. And sadly, um, th there have been plenty of bosses and even in the 1800s, slaveholders who beat this passage over the heads of their slaves mm -hmm. and says, here, you fall in line, uh, which is absolutely despicable, repulsive that they would do that. Um, I think the Apostle Paul helps us. Um, there's a verse in Colossians 4.1 that talks to the bosses, to the slave owners of 2,000 years ago, and can apply just fine for us today if we're in the leadership role. Mm -hmm. um, notice what he says in, in Colossians 4.1. He says, Masters, grant your slave, grant to your slaves justice 
and fairness, knowing that you too have a master mm. in heaven. And so those of us who are in that role, we're the boss, I, I think we need to be careful that even though this text isn't really our text, mm -hmm that there are other texts, even in God's word, even from slave times, even from masters who were coming to Christ, maybe because they'd been inspired by their, their slaves, mm -hmm. that Paul was saying quite uh, honestly and sincerely and passionately, hey, you have no business whatsoever being unfair, abusive. Remember who you are. You have a master in heaven. Um, and so why don't you act out of that knowledge and that awareness and, um, and that way, regardless of whether you're the employer or the employee, it can be said of you, uh, you're a good witness mm -hmm. for Jesus. Well, that's helpful. And this message really was helpful, especially for those of us who, as you said, we're going back to work tomorrow. And so this will help us as we journey through. So thank you for answering those questions and for the great lesson. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with Postscript as we sit down with Mike DeStefano after he brings part three of our Surrender series. So please come back and join us for that. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.